Hello, my name is Paul Stewart and after a week and a half of travelling around Greece and not at all looking like the dorkiest tourist possible, I'm at the El Safwa First Class Lounge uh, just before my flight back to Sydney in the Qatar Airways flagship First Class A380 product. My journey began approximately 10 hours before my flight, mostly due to the quality of my hotel in Doha and a lack of Wi-Fi, which is catastrophic for any millennial. First and business passengers have a separate check-in area and are again separated off with first passengers ushered to the right where there's tables, chairs and refreshments. You're then directed through a separate security and customs queue and catch an escalator directly into the Al Safra first class lounge. Now unlike most airlines which open their first class lounge to passengers who hold high levels of status irrespective of travel class, this lounge is only open to those with a first class ticket. Particularly with Qatar currently cut out of the short haul Middle Eastern market due to various political reasons, this lounge is incredibly quiet. For a number of hours, I was the only passenger. It's an impressive lounge and I've created a separate 10 minute review which you can find in the video description below. Now I'll run you through my highlights. There's a restaurant with a full a la carte menu. There's usually more food on display as well as alcohol but because we're currently in Ramadan, that's all hidden. Here's my lunch. And while I'm eating, I thought I might spam my Instagram and Facebook pages, which I think you should go and follow or join and like. I'll also mention two other YouTubers I quite enjoy watching. First, there's Dennis Bunnick Travels, who does really well edited videos. He's a fellow Aussie, so presumably he'll be better at cricket than the Poms, or Kiwis, or South Africans. The next channel I enjoy is Paul's Trip Reports. He's got a great first name and certainly flies a lot. He's based in the UK, which I think is just west of Belgium, although Nigel would probably tell you they're the same country. His channel is great if you're a bit asking about trains as well as planes. As I had quite a few hours to kill, I booked in one of the nap rooms. These are essentially like small hotel rooms with a bed and bathroom. Some also have two beds and a desk. As I said before, I'll go into more detail with these in another video. Next up was a massage, which was really good, although it's a bit tight that you have to pay for it. Because it's a proper one with oil and minimal clothing, they give you these disposable undies so that the oil doesn't wreck your clothes. And now, it was dinner time. A few hours later, it was time to board my flight. There's only eight seats in the first class cabin at the front of the upper level, and they're in a one-to-one -one layout. As I'll show later, window seats are best for singles and middle seats for couples. A glass of champagne was offered, and in this case, it was Krug 2004 Vintage. Again, because of Ramadan, the bottles were hidden away out of sight, so you won't be seeing any footage of drinks being poured. Cheese and olives were also offered, and followed up by Arabic coffee and dates. A top-up of the drink was offered, and now let's have a look at this window seat in more detail. Just behind the TV screen is somewhere to store your clothes. You can't see them, but there were coat hangers inside.
just by your side once you're sitting down is a privacy screen which only has limited effectiveness. Below that is the armrest which lowers and converts into a very wide mattress as you'll see later. Inside the armrests are noise cancelling headphones and controls for the seat which of course folds completely flat. There's also a USB port in here for charging your device. On the other side is a storage spot for a bottle of water and a remote for the in-flight entertainment. There's reading material in here, a map reading light and buttons to lower and raise the sunshades for your three windows. And here at arm's reach is a cocktail table. And of course, a fold-out table which is properly massive and you can use it to share a meal with someone as you'll see later that there's a seat belt on that foot rest ledge thing. Importantly, you can also move the table forward and sneak out of your seat during the meal service. And just behind this lamp is a universal power plug. And of course, in front of you is a large high definition TV screen. Unfortunately, storage is an issue and there's no overhead lockers. Staff will store stuff up front, although often you want something within arm's reach. Here's what the middle seats look like with the privacy divided down. And of course, here's an amenity kit and pyjamas. I was glad to see that the PJs come in a small size and they actually fit me quite well. Again, I'll be giving away the amenity kit to a viewer and I'll include details of that giveaway later on. Shortly after that, we pushed back and headed for the runway. I'll speed through the takeoff as my camera struggled in the dark light and unfortunately we missed what would have been a great view of the city centre by making a hard right turn just after takeoff. There's two toilets for the eight first class seats and they're located at the front on both sides of the stairs. I went to check it out and get changed into my pyjamas. More drinks and warm nuts were offered, and I settled down and watched an old classic. Casa Airways offer a dine-on-demand service where you choose when and what you want from the menu. 
As it was now around five hours since dinner, I went for a second dinner. Also to save you from waiting through the menus, I'll hold off until the end of the video where I'll go through them slowly. At the front of the aircraft, there's a selection of nibbles and reading material. And behind the business cabin, there's a bar shared with business and first passengers. Again, due to it being during Ramadan, no alcohol was on display, although you could still request it. While I was out at the bar, my seat was converted into a bed. It's certainly one of the more comfortable seats I've had in the air. I often find that my hips get sore if I'm lying on my side and there's not enough padding, although this wasn't an issue on this flight. Before I went to sleep, I wanted to check out this facial mist that came in the Amanda kit. Here I am removing my reading glasses prior to reading the instructions, before finding out that there really weren't any instructions. And after that refreshing moment, I then checked out the body spray, which was also refreshing. Now feeling refreshed, although clearly needing some metrosexual advice, I went to bed. Seven hours later, I woke up. One of multiple cold or warm towels were brought around, as well as chocolate and some orange juice. We were now around four hours from landing in Sydney and out the window was this strainer out the back. I never eat big breakfasts, so I just went for some of the lighter options. I should mention that there is Wi-Fi and first class passengers get 200 megabytes for free. Unfortunately, it was incredibly slow and I gave up after waiting five minutes for Instagram to load a single photo. A few people have messaged me saying that they've seen me at the airport. So in the future, feel free to come up and say hello. If we're on the same flights, I may be able to get you into the lounge. So next time you're flying, keep an eye out for an excited little ringer who will probably be sunburned. And saying good day, mate to everyone because we all say that all the time. Uh, kangaroos. And now to conclude what has been a wonderful flight. The service from the person that greeted me from check-in until the end of the flight was wonderful. Meals were served and removed properly and the call bell answered within seconds by someone with a big smile who was keen to help. I should have mentioned earlier that the food is on demand so that you can eat whenever you want to instead of having the traditional meal services that you had in the past. The quality of the food and drink was great. I noticed that the caviar was served with a pearl spoon. Some charismatic fellow on the internet told me it's better than a metal spoon because the latter apparently messes with the taste. So mm, there you go. Now the seat itself is mixed. There's no doubt that it's huge and very comfortable and converted into a great bed, but privacy is limited. Many other airlines such as Qantas and Cathay don't have doors in the first class suites, although they're all angled inwards away from other passengers line of sight. While I didn't have anyone sitting next to me, I feel that they would have been able to see everything, especially once my seat reclined and the seat moves slightly forwards. The other issue is a lack of storage. There's no overhead bins, so I had to store my bag under the ledge in front. So when the seat goes completely flat, I'd have to sneak my arms in from the aisle to get access to the bag. Look, there's no doubt that I'm nitpicking and I'm incredibly fortunate to have flown in first class, but in comparison to their competitors, and these are honestly my only two criticisms, privacy and storage are issues. And the in-flight entertainment was fun. The screen itself was high quality and the content was reasonably standard. While there were advertisements before movies, you were thankfully able to skip through them. And as usual, I'm giving away an amenity kit. 
It's open to anyone over the ages of 13 and I'm happy to mail internationally. To enter, simply comment below and include the hashtag AmenityKit. The competition closes on Thursday the 7th of June 2018 at midnight Sydney time. Full details are included in the video description below. Now before I run you through the menus, thanks again for watching and as I said before if you see me at the airport feel free to come up and say good day. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook.